Um, I've got a few questions uh, for you, Aaron. If you could just give me your best answers, and I'll try and come back to you with, uh, with a counter argument. Um, I'm a Christian. I'm a creationist. I do believe in the six-day creation, what the Bible uh, talks about. Um, my first question to you, uh, if you could please explain to me uh, whereabouts all the material came from to make all things observed. That's all planets, all stars. Because um, I, I believe that uh, every molecule every physical thing had to have a beginning now I'm talking about going back before the so called Big Bang which um, uh, most evolutionists seem to think that's where it all started from so what I'd really like to know is, is what actually went bang nothing I don't mean there was nothing and then it went bang I mean there was no bang the name Big Bang was originally a derogatory term made up by those who preferred to believe in a steady state universe, and it was meant to criticize the idea of a cosmic expansion from a singularity. The problem I have with this is that much of it can only be indicated mathematically, but it is also undeniably evident, which is why a lot of other people have problems with it, too. It's really difficult for common folk with no prior knowledge of any of this to understand what a singularity is. I doubt if I understand what it is. But I know it isn't simply material like you thought it was. A lot of people realize that atoms are made up almost entirely of empty space, so they imagine that if you could somehow force all the space out of the atoms, you could squish everything down pretty well, especially when you realize that matter can be created out of energy and vice versa, and that's obviously the case here, with an insanely hot plasma state cooling to become the first subatomic particles. But we're not talking about a super dense ball of prematerial energy floating around in a big black void for a while before it erupts. It is much more abstruse than that, because it isn't just energy. It's all the forces of nature as well as time and space. Everything, existence itself, was squished into this one infinitesimal unit. So asking what happened in a universe that didn't yet exist at a time before there was time is really no different than trying to draw a map to a point south of the South Pole. The question doesn't make sense. Neither does it make any sense to involve this topic in a discussion of evolution, which is defined as descent with inherent genetic modification, and therefore obviously hasn't had anything whatsoever to do with where anything in the universe came from. Accepting evolution doesn't always mean accepting the Big Bang, nor does it mean rejecting God, and in fact, most people endorse all three. But they don't worship the Bible, because <laughs> that would be silly. Stop taking it literally. It's only the Bible. It's not gospel. Since you've confused biology with cosmology and theology, then I must point out that whether gods exist or not is irrelevant. Because evolution remains an inescapable fact of population genetics and mid environmental pressures regardless how the galaxies came to be. Evolution didn't start with the Big Bang either. It started once reproductive organisms began inheriting genetic mutations from ancestral populations. And that was over 10 billion years after the Big Bang. I believe everything which has got physical uh, um, matter uh, attached to it, uh, that is also including gases as well, and little protons, and you're getting right down to little micro stuff right now. Everything like that has to be created. It has to have a beginning, and therefore has to be created. How is that created? Can you tell me that? Because if I understood you correctly, you're implying that if science can't tell you right now, today, exactly how that happened, then we may as well assume we'll never know. and we Might as well just forget everything we do know and stop trying to figure out anything more. We should just assume your conclusion and say that a god did it, even though that's not an explanation either, and there's no evidence to imply that such things even exist. Worse still, we could act as if we actually know something about the unknown and simply assert that the reason that science can't detect any aspect of God at all is because his powers will always lie outside the greatest scope that science can ever achieve. That's a great way of dodging the question, isn't it? Does Jesus homeopaths get on my nerves with the old, well, science doesn't know everything. Well, science knows it doesn't know everything, otherwise it'd stop. But it... <laughs> but as well as that... You know, how would they bother? But as well, just because science doesn't know everything doesn't mean you can fill in the gaps with whatever fairy tale most appeals to you. 
Assuming miracles has always only ever impeded or prohibited our pursuit of understanding of anything. Throughout our history, every time we couldn't yet explain something and settled for supernatural excuses instead, we turned out to be wrong. Once we discover the real answers, they always turn out to be much more complex than our suspicions and superstitions, and such is certainly the case here, too. Even in those situations wherein supermassive bodies compress to the point that they don't just bend the fabric of space-time, but actually tear a hole in it and suck stuff in after them, wherever that stuff goes and whatever becomes of it, it came from something else, somewhere else. So if it were that an uber-galactic omnibus were forced through a similar dimensional rift, bursting forth to inflate a new universal void, the stuff within that molten universe would still have come from somewhere. So we might have myriad universes sprouting into being like bubbles forming in the bottom of a pot coming to boil, but those bubbles didn't come from nothing either, though they may look like they did. They're just changing states. Everything in the new universe would have been converted out of some prior state, whether it was funneled in from another realm or whether it was always in this one. So the summary answer is, even if all matter was created as a result of the Big Bang, the source material is eternal. It didn't have a beginning. Evolutionists don't believe that anything ever came from nothing. Only creationists believe that, and that is in fact what you're saying. That all matter has to be created ex nihilo, out of nothing. We cannot get something from nothing. That is obvious. You cannot, you cannot get all this from absolutely nothing. There has to be uh, a beginning to it, and therefore everything uh, which, which we see physically has to be created from absolutely nothing. We cannot get something from nothing. Therefore, has to be created from nothing. You cannot get all this from absolutely nothing. Everything like that has to be created from absolutely nothing. It has to have a beginning and therefore has to be created from nothing. We cannot get something from nothing. That is obvious. You're not just contradicting yourself. You're also contradicting the first law of thermodynamics. Worse than that, because you believe in the particular Bronze Age mythology that you do, you also believe that created means being spoken out of nothing and literally wished into being in a method that can only be described as an incantation spell. So how could you convince anyone? You give me no reason to believe you. You obviously have no understanding of the scientific position and have nothing to imply any other option. Yet you still expect me to accept your assertion that everything was conjured out of nothing by magic. So even if we had never discovered red-shifted galaxies or microwave background radiation, even if we had nothing at all to imply the universal inflation or the singularity, I still could not possibly take your position seriously. It's not like in the absence of a scientific option we have your option. We, your option is not an option in the absence of anything. It's magic. You're asking me to reject everything I know about anything for no reason at all, and then to believe, without reservation, fables long disproved about spells cast by genie-like ghosts, and for the sake of that folklore, to deny relativity, cosmology, evolution, tectonics, nuclear physics, and many other aspects of science that we know and understand and can prove to be really working in the real world. None of that applies to the option you would promote in their stead. If the general picture, however, of a Big Bang followed by an expanding universe is correct, what happened before that? Was the universe devoid of all matter and then the matter suddenly, somehow, created? How did that happen? In many cultures, the customary answer is that a god or gods created the universe out of nothing. But if we wish to pursue this question courageously, we must, of course, ask the next question. Where did God come from? If we decide that this is an unanswerable question, why not save a step and conclude that the origin of the universe is an unanswerable question? Or, if we say that God always existed, why not save a step and conclude that the universe always existed, that there's no need for a creation, it was always here? These are not easy questions. Cosmology brings us face to face with the deepest mysteries, with questions that were once treated only in religion and myth. The Big Bang is a fundamental theory of cosmology. 
and evolution is a fundamental theory of biology. If you have any other questions about the Big Bang, I'm not your man. There are plenty of people here who are much more competent to answer those questions than I. But if you'd like to change the subject to evolution instead, I'd be delighted to debate that with you, and I eagerly await your next question.